So what I'd like to do in this video is show you how to get the part opened up in Inventor, uh, get a feel for how Inventor works, kind of the layout, and you're going to find that this is the same in just about any 3D modeling program, whether you're using SolidWorks or Inventor or Solid Edge. Uh, they all behave very similarly. So very quickly, all I want to do is run through getting this into a 2D draft and getting some dimensions applied, applying some tolerances, and then editing a title block. Very, very simple. Uh, but does take a little bit of uh, basic knowledge. So right now all I did was start up Inventor and open the part file of a really simple part and I'll put the hyperlink to this part so if you want to play around with this specific part in uh, Inventor as you watch this I'll put it on the web and it'll be on the YouTube page for this video. So what we want to do is create a 2D draft so if I come up here to the I button in the upper left hand corner and click New uh, I want to create a new file. I want to create a new draft. Now I've got my default stuff stored in here and I've created my own title blocks you can see here uh, but I'm not going to use those. I actually want to come over to the English tab because you're not going to have my custom stuff. Uh, go to the English tab because this was designed in English units because I live in the United States and uh, here in the English tab we've got this thing that looks like a draft. It's got a couple of views on it. That's what we want. The .idw file and we want it in inches. So if we go to the ANSI inches IDW it gets this nice gigantic sheet. This is a C-size sheet, way too big for our purposes. So just like over here in the 3D view, we have a little flyout menu like a directory tree structure type of thing with all of the different uh, objects in this drawing. You know, we've got extrusions and holes and mirrors and work planes and all that type of thing. Uh, over here in the drawing, we have something similar. We have drawing resources reference uh, formats etc and then we've got if I create multiple sheets I'll have multiple ones of these sheets with borders and uh, here is the title block and if you look closely here uh, at the icons it actually depicts what each object what each object is just like over here in the 3d view you know it depicts the the little icon depicts what exactly we're talking about so uh, we want to change the sheet size so if I click on the the sheet over here in the structure view, uh, if I right click and hit edit sheet then I can change all sorts of things about that sheet. So I want to change this to an A size sheet which is an 8.5 by 11. Most of the parts that we're going to work with in this class are 8.5 by 11 specifically because you can print that on any printer. And uh, so we're going to select an A size sheet. We notice that it leaves a gigundous title block. I don't want that title block. This is an ANSI large title block so if I want to get rid of that I can just click on it and hit delete on the keyboard or right click and hit and click on delete. So uh, here under Drawing Resources, I'm going to come down to Title Blocks and say, oh, there's a specific title block just for A size sheets, actually, and B size sheets as well. But uh, So I double click on that, and boom, there is a, a properly sized title block. We notice that it's not populated with anything, but that's OK. So the next step will be to place a base view. I want to get the basic view of this part into the drawing, so I'm going to hit Base up here in the upper left hand corner under place views under the place views tab and now we see that because I have the part already open over here in this tab it automatically populates this drop down list with all the parts that you have open that's really convenient and uh, allows you to go back and forth if I want to make some changes to the drawing I can do that and it'll automatically update in the 2D draft which is really useful so if you don't have the part open but have it on your computer, you can click this button and it'll open up a browsing menu and you can go find it. So before I close out of this, uh, I can change the scale if I want to go 2 to 1 or something like that. I don't really need to in this case. And uh, I can change which view I'm starting with as the quote unquote base view. So I want to start with the front view and then I want to come over here and click a side view. So I want these two views and right now it hasn't actually created anything. All it's done, I've told it which views I want to create, but it hasn't drawn them yet. So what I need to do is once I've clicked the views that I want, and I could come down here and project another view and an isometric if I wanted to, la da da. Now I need to right click and hit create. And that finishes it and actually goes ahead and draws the views. Now uh, I have no need for the isometric view. This is a really simple part. Uh, and that view doesn't tell me anything interesting. So these two views should be enough to pretty much define the part. So now I want to annotate it. I want to add notes to this. I want to add dimensions. So I'm going to come up here to the annotate tab. And so we've got all these annotating tools. The one we're going to use the most is this dimension tool. You click on it once, now you're in dimension mode. 
and so you can click on just about anything a little side note here if you ever need to figure out if you can't remember what's going on leave the cursor over top of a button and it'll play sometimes it'll play a video sometimes it'll just give you a picture but it'll give you a short explanation of how to use this tool and then if you want more while it's hovering over that you can hit F1 and it'll take you to the online help for that particular tool in the program so you know if I want to know what's the hole and thread tool do if I leave it the cursor over it it, it tells me so I'm gonna use the dimension tool and you can either just click single lines like that and get a nice dimension and notice it gives this nice separation there between the witness lines and the the part which is important uh, or if I want a dimension between two lines I can click here and then here on that line and it says oh yeah you want the, the distance between those two you don't want the length of, the, of each one so again gives me nice separation now if I were just to grab this length for example and then drag that out here we notice that I don't get good line separation that's because I should have clicked here and dragged it so pay attention to that because if you don't get that separation you will find that with a more complicated part it becomes very difficult to separate the part from the dimension lines and it actually becomes really visually disturbing we also wouldn't do this because that would over constrain the drawing as I've dimensioned these two and dimensioning that one would dimension the same thing twice and we don't ever want to do that bad drafting practice so I'm just gonna go ahead and drag some dimensions here uh, let's dimension between you and you and I need that thickness and uh, oh I want I want uh, I want the diameter of this hole these these are two holes that go through remember but that doesn't tell me how deep the hole is if I use the dimension tool on a hole all it's gonna do is dimension the circular feature that it goes to so if it's a tapped hole it's only gonna do either the minor or the major diameter of that tapped hole it's not gonna tell me oh this is a quarter 20 thread it's just gonna tell me you know oh that's a point two oh one hole through because the tap hole that the hole that goes through is 201 it's not a quarter inch well that's not useful that's why we use the hole and thread tool instead so instead of just dimensioning that circle which is what the dimension tool did I want to dimension that hole and so I use the hole and thread tool again if I'm confused leave the cursor over top of it let it come down and you get some basic instructions so uh, using that I, I know that I, w I want two of these I don't want to have to put this on every hole if you've got a pattern you can edit a dimension and when you first apply a dimension it will pop up with this window and you can get it to stop doing that every time you create a dimension by unchecking this box that says edit dimension when created if you want to edit the tolerances one by one as you create them that's fine too it's all a personal style thing personally I prefer to apply the dimensions then batch edit them later so uh, I uncheck that box but we'll get into this here in a bit uh, while you're in dimension mode, in other words, as long as I, that button has been clicked, I can just go through and happily add dimensions at will. Uh, if I you know, do two non-parallel lines, it gives me the angle between them, this, that, and the other. Uh, to get out of dimension mode, I can either hit escape, which is what I just did, or I can right click and hit done. Same, same effect. As long as you're in dimension mode, it's going to assume that what you're doing is editing dimensions. Now I'm more kind of in, in, out in a basic mode. If I want to get back to this dimension and edit it, I can double click on it. So what I was talking about, if I've got a couple of features that are the same and I want to just dimension them one at a time, I can edit that dimension and in the text say 2x. And actually we remember that in our uh, drafting environment, all letters, all, all text should be in uppercase, should be capitalized. That helps us, it's just a convention that we follow, it helps keep uh, the ambiguity of things like L and 1 from becoming confused. So we use uppercase letters, and I could say 2x diameter 0.38 through, and that is the standard way to say there are two of these, and it should be obvious to the, to the viewer, and you only do this where it's an obvious case of what you're referring to when you say that there are two of them. Uh, you can do this with repeated dimensions, you can do it with repeated anything, it doesn't have to be holes. So now to locate the holes we remember oh I need to dimension to the center of the hole not the side so the holes and all circular features actually all arcs anything like that should have center marks up here in the symbols submenu there's a center mark button right here I can leave the cursor over it and watch for instructions but I click that and just like I would be in dimension mode now I'm in quote unquote center mark mode and I can center mark those two circular features 
right click, hit done, good to go. Now these are lined up, I only want to apply one dimension to get from this lip to this, uh, the center of this circle. So I can connect those with a center line here and now I have a nice witness line to dimension to instead of having to apply a dimension to each hole which could be a little confusing. I can say listen I want these on the same level and I'm interested in this dimension. That is far more useful, far easier to read uh, and a far more efficient use of space. And then I need to dimension these of course locate them horizontally and what really matters is the distance between the holes. So we've got a pretty well dimensioned uh, drawing. Now I want to put a center line bisector here in the side view just to denote that this is a hole. I can click this and then this will put a center line halfway in between two lines of your choice or two points if you like that. Uh, and so that that helps me denote oh yeah that's a hole and it's centered here. You wouldn't dimension to this because it's hidden in this view. So I would dimension to it in the circular face. We would locate circular features in their circular face, but this helps guide us when we're looking at that view to remember what exactly we're looking at. So now uh, two last things that I want to do. I want to apply some uh, tolerances to this and I want to change the precision of the uh, dimension. So all of these are, are precise down to the hundredths place. More often than not, we're doing things at the thousandth level if we're using a milling machine or, or um, uh, especially a CNC machine. We want to put the level of precision on there that we expect. With this part, I expect the precision of about a thousandth of an inch. So I'm going to put that precision on those dimensions that I expect that precision on. To do that, I can double click on any uh, dimension or if you're in dimension mode just single click on it and this is that menu that popped up there's a precision and tolerance tab and I can set the pr primary unit which is what's displayed you know the primary dimension and then my tolerance precision should match the primary unit precision I don't know why that's not a default but uh, you generally if I want to measure something to within a thousandth of an inch there's no sense in tolerancing it more tightly than that so those two levels of precision should match but this allows me over here in the tolerance method to uh, apply any style of tolerances. So a symmetric would be a plus or minus tolerance. And so if I add plus or minus five, we see what that looks like. Pretty cool, pretty easy. Without changing anything, I can go to the deviation and say, okay, well I want plus five, minus five. That says the same thing as I said before, and the 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 other notation for that type of dimension would be certainly be preferable. But say I want it to be minus zero plus five and I can I can do that very easily if I'm doing like a hole or a diameter I'll usually use stack limits for those again this is a stylistic thing we'll get into that later um, I can do stacked limits and so instead of saying two inches plus five minus zero I just put the actual limits of that dimension up uh, whichever way you like it you know uh, depending on what you're doing one may be clearer than the other so um, I can do that very easily if I want to apply you know let's let's put a nice symmetric dimension here and again, I want the primary unit and primary tolerance down to the thousandth level. And let's say plus or minus uh, five, plus or minus five thousandths. And let's say I want to apply that to a couple of different dimensions. If I want to um, apply that as a batch, I can right click on that dimension and hit copy properties. Then I can just box select the stuff that I want to apply that to. Again, we don't want things to be confusing so we want to give it plenty of white space so make sure that you pull your dimensions out to a spot where they're easy to read you want to make sure that this part is easy to understand as you read it so don't crowd your text give yourself plenty of space and if you need a bigger sheet then use a bigger sheet but the parts that we're going to be concerned with in this class shouldn't require that so now I've got uh, uh, some dimensions applied and I want to get to editing the title block. Uh, we'll get that we'll get to that, I'll tell you what, in the next video so I can get this one uploaded and get you started. And we'll call it good. So we've to review, we got the base view in here. Uh, we put some projected views together. We applied some dimensions and applied some tolerances and you know that looks pretty good. Obviously we've got this incomplete title block, but we'll get to that in another video.